15 minutes full body sculpt workout. We don't need any equipment and we only need 15 minutes of our time. The first exercise is a floor touch jump squat. Stand with your feet wider than a shoulder width. Then go into squats, touch with the floor with one hand. Then jump up and go into another squat and touch the floor with the opposite hand. Make sure that your knees and toes are going the same direction. It is fine if you place toes facing forward, if you place your toes facing slightly outwards, but make sure that your alignment is correct and your knees are going the same direction as your toes. Keep your back straight, chest is upright and activate your abs. Keep breathing and make sure that your neck is relaxed and is following the spine. And our first break. For the next exercise, you will need a slider, but if you don't have it, utilize anything. Depend it on the floor surface. Use a towel, use your sock, use a book on your carpet. Any object you can find at home which is going to slide. Then place one foot onto that object and shift all your weight on the other leg which you're going to be squatting on. Go down under control, slide down, keep your back straight, your abs are braced. Keep breathing, slide down, stay there for a split second and then go upwards. But make sure that you control the movement. Your standing leg is working here. It should really be felt everywhere in your quads, in your glutes, on the side of your thighs. Keep going. And already our break. And we're going to move to the opposite side. It is a challenging one. We're not just working on our sculpting, but we're working on our flexibility, on our balance, coordination, agility. If your balance is an issue, you can place a chair or do this exercise by the wall and place your hand onto the wall for support. But try to go without any support here to challenge yourself. Control every single rep. Activate and tense all your muscles. Feel them working. Think about your muscles working. Slide down, keep your back straight, drive your hips backwards and sit back. Slide down, breathe and up under control. Well done and another break. The next exercise is a curtsy to a toe squat. Pick your favorite side and place your feet about shoulder width. Then go into a curtsy lunge. Then bring that leg to the side and place it on your toes and go into a squat. Try to keep all your weight on the working leg. Here for me, it's my left. So go into that curtsy lunge under control, sit back, feel that stretch in your hamstrings, in your glutes. Then step to the side onto your toes and go into a squat. Notice how I'm slowing down when I'm descending. I'm keeping my muscles under tension for longer to get a better result and to control every single rep. And another break. And of course we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Keep your brakes active. You can march on a spot, you can dance as I'm doing there. But keep moving, don't stop suddenly. And already moving to the other side. When doing a curtsy lunge, make sure that you bring your leg behind you and slightly to the side. And make sure that your toes and knees are going the same direction. Control every rep. Keep your back straight. Your spine is in neutral position and neck is following the spine. You can keep your hands by your sides, in front of you, how I'm doing, whichever you find comfortable. But make sure that you control your squats, your lunges, feel those muscles working. Keep going. Well done, and another break. 
The next exercise is going to be a push-up to a V-walk. Go into the floor, into a plank position, place your wrists underneath your shoulders, activate your entire body, keep your body in one straight line and do a push-up. Keep your elbows close to your body and once you've done the push-up, walk yourself up to form a V facing down. Really feel those muscles working. Try not to tilt your body when walking into that V position. Try to keep it steady. That will activate your core muscles. That will make your leg muscles being activated because you need to keep your body steady there. And we are already done. Have a little rest before we're going to move to the next exercise, which is going to be punches in a squat position. Place your feet wider apart, toes are pointing forward or slightly outwards. Descend into a squat and stay in that position. And keep punching. Imagine that you're punching a punch bob or a bag. Or imagine the fight of your life. Powerful punches, one arm, the other arm. You can do a double punch, whichever you prefer. But stay in that squat position. Keep your abs braced and your back should be straight. I know that's going to burn. You can see my face. I am struggling there, feeling that burn and enjoying that burn. Keep going. Well done. And another little break. Now we're moving to a two pulse kick up. Go onto your four and pick your favorite side. Your wrists are underneath your shoulders, hands are about shoulder width apart. Your knees are under your hips. Bring one leg up and kick up, trying to reach with your heel to the ceiling. Then lower your leg down just a fraction and do another kick up. Really activate your glutes. Keep your upper body parallel to the ground. Do not rotate, do not tilt to one side. And feel that burn in your glutes. Squeeze them, activate them. Feel them working. Lower your leg down and keep your core engaged. Come up and two kicks up. Well done. And we're having a little rest before moving to the opposite side, of course. Once again, make sure that your form and alignment is at its best. You need to keep that proper form to prevent injuries and to get all the benefits out of your workout. Proper form, good breathing, proper technique when performing an exercise. That's all your keys for getting your results. Do not rush. Keep every rep under control. Feel those muscles activated and engaged. And keep going. Bring that heel up. Squeeze your glutes. Well done. And another break. Next exercise is going to be climbers to a child pose. Go into a plank and keep your wrists under your shoulders. Then do four mountain climbers. It is four per one side, so eight overall. And then go into a child position whilst keeping your knees elevated. Then go back into a plank, do mountain climbers. With mountain climbers, try not to tilt your body to the side. Try not to rotate it and keep your torso parallel to the floor. Activate your abs. Keep driving those knees close to your chest and control it. Then go down into child pose, but keep your legs elevated. Well done. Just a few seconds left. And another break for us.
Now we're going to be doing a plank slide to reverse abs crunch. This exercise requires you to tense the entire body, all your muscles, the wrists underneath your shoulders. In a plank position, abs are braced. Slide yourself down under control as far forward as you possibly can. Then slide yourself back into a plank position and round your back to do a reverse crunch. You should really feel your core muscles being engaged there and being activated when doing those crunches. Then go down into a plank again. Keep your body parallel to the floor in a one straight line. Do not drop your hips. Do not bring your glutes up too much. One straight line. And already break. The next exercise is going to be abs walk. Go onto your back and tilt your pelvis so you close the gap between the back and the floor. Your shoulder blades are staying on the floor. Lift your head up and keep your hands by your head. Then do a little step with one foot and bring the other foot close to it. And do little steps up and back down. Legs are staying elevated throughout the whole time. Brace those abs and keep your core engaged throughout the whole time. It should burn if it really becomes unbearable and your back starts to arch. Give yourself one second of rest and then move straight back. And already our rest period. The next exercise is a side plank to a knee raise. Pick your favorite side once again. Go into a side plank. Make sure that your wrist is underneath your shoulder. Then bring your hips down, then lift them up and bring your bottom leg to your chest by bending at the knee. Then straighten your leg, go down onto the floor and repeat the whole sequence. Try to keep your body elevated. Even when you lower your hips down, do not drop them onto the floor. Keep them elevated throughout. Your core muscles should be really engaged here. Feel those obliques working and keep breathing. Well done. And a break before we go into move to the opposite side. Well done, get into the position, get into side plank, make sure that your wrist is under your shoulder. Then dip your hips, bring them up and bring that knee to your chest. Core is activated, keep breathing. Well done, keep going. Back is straight, neck is following the spine, no tension in your neck. Up your knee, go down and up, knee to the chest. Well done. And our last exercise is going to be a tabletop walk. Go onto your four. Make sure that wrists are underneath your shoulders, your knees are underneath your hips. And bring your knees up in the air and keep them eleva elevated throughout the whole exercise. Then straighten one leg up and the opposite arm at the same time. Then bring them down and do the same thing on the opposite side. We are keeping our body steady. We're not moving our torso at all. And that requires a lot of work from our muscles, from our core muscles, our leg muscles. You're going to feel that everywhere. Neck is relaxed. Look straight ahead of you into the floor and keep driving that leg and extending your arm and then the opposite. And we're already done with it. I hope you enjoy this workout. Make sure that you really stretch all your muscles now. 
and please let me know how I've done. Let me know how you felt the following day. And please subscribe to my channel that you do not miss any of my new videos. And remember, the main thing as always, love yourself and love your life and I love you all and I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye for now.